do my intros because I get first of all Molly's in here with me, so if you hear her playing in the background, Molly just wants to be with mom all the time. And what are they saying? Intros are always hard for me because I feel like I need to get into this like mojo. Is that how you say mojo? No, not really, I don't know. Alright. <sighs> but let's do it. Alright, I'm gonna be completely honest with you guys. Well let's first say hi. <laughs> Hi friends, hi guys, hello. Welcome back to For He Who Is My Tea. This is part two of Blood. I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I already filmed this once and I was just not feeling well. I literally thought I was gonna throw up on camera and I just was all over the place and I wasn't really explaining myself well, so I'm back. I'm doing this again. This second one is a little bit harder to explain, so I'm gonna do my best to articulate what the author says, but it's gonna be good. Just. Hang in there with me, pray before watching this so that the Holy Spirit can teach you something new and touch your heart and your mind and help you see the way God sees this content. God teaches us new things every day and this is something that I learned and I wanted to share with you guys so that's why I'm doing this. This is why there's a part two and why it's here on YouTube. I still can't believe I'm doing YouTube. It's still super weird to me. I think about it and I'm like, wait, what? That's me? And it's still super out of my comfort zone. Even posting sometimes is like, <sighs> sometimes there's easier days than others, but it's still definitely something I'm working on and I know God's working through this channel. So thank you to everyone who's reached out to me. You guys are so sweet and I feel the support and I feel the love. And this is all for God's glory. So let's give God the glory for this one. Anyways, I'm going on a rant. Also, I'm not drinking coffee. I'm drinking, it's a matcha green tea latte. Yo girl is so tired. Today was daylight savings. So I'm like exhausted. I'm like trying to stay awake. But so we had to stop by Starbucks. And I had to get a matcha green tea latte because it has some caffeine in it. And I feel like this will keep me up and get the things I need to get done, done. But you guys, my this is my first time ever trying it. I've heard good things about it, but this is my first time trying it. And I tried it, my first sip, I was kind of like, wait, this tastes like dirt. And then I drank a little bit more and I drank a little bit more and now I'm like obsessed with it. I'm like, oh, this is what they're talking about. It's an acquired taste for sure. I'm just rambling this morning. I just, I don't know. I think it's just cause I'm tired, you guys. And I'm still feeling a little sick. Like I don't feel like throwing up now. It's just like, I'm just, my body's like, ugh, if that makes sense. <laughs> Anyways, without further ado, let's get into the video. So we're back into this book. I'm continuing on the blood section because I didn't finish part one, that's why there's part two. And basically in this last segment, last part, the author explains one more thing and then he kind of ties everything together with something else. So. Our third point, if you haven't seen part one, you guys should check it out because it has good information and I think it will teach you something new and will encourage you. But the third point that he has is about immunization. Immunization, everyone's heard about it, I think. You get your immunization shots, you have your immunization records, it's like your vaccinations that you get when you're a kid. That all that sort of stuff is what we're gonna talk about. And it has to do with your white blood cells. So we've been on the topic of blood and we've been on this topic about your bloodstream and in your bloodstream, you definitely have so many things running through it. It's just a giant pipeline. Like there's just a lot going on. And it's very, 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 very important to your body and for your life. One thing we're gonna focus on are the white blood cells. So you have white blood cells that are basically your soldiers in your body. They are your fighters. They will fight with whoever, whatever comes into your body that's not supposed to be there. We can call them the invaders. You have invaders that are not supposed to be in your body and they're there. That's what happens when you get sick because they're trying to cause chaos and trying to destroy something in your body and your white blood cells are like, not on my watch today, we're here to defend Susan. So your white blood cells are so, so, so important. You have over 50 billion white blood cells. You have a ton of white blood cells. You have different types of white blood cells. And these different types of white blood cells are in charge of different things. They have different chemical weapons that they use to defeat certain viruses, certain bacteria. Most of your white blood cells only live up to 10 hours. After 10 hours, they'll die and then move on. But you have a few that live up to 70 to 80 years. So basically those white blood cells are with you from when you're born 
all the way till you're older. These white blood cells are so important because they hold the information of how to defeat certain viruses. For example, if you get the cold so that your body can defeat it quicker, these white blood cells hold that information of saying, hey, this chemical weapon will defeat that cold. Or this other chemical weapon won't work on that cold, so don't even try it. So these white blood cells are like the wise ones. They're the ones who know how to defeat invaders. If it's a new invader, aka coronavirus, your immune system, your white blood cells won't know what to do. They'll be like, ah, uh, this is a new one. Let's try to do whatever we can to kill it. But while they're trying to figure that out, the invader is getting stronger. It's multiplying. It's invading other areas in your body. And that's what makes it scary because during those hours, during those days that your white blood cells are trying to figure out how to kill it the enemy is just getting stronger so that's why your vaccinations and your immunization shots are so important because when you get that shot it's like let's talk about the flu shot because that's something that everybody should be getting yearly when you get the flu shot it's a weak version of the flu and that's so your immune system can know oh this is what the flu is okay this is what we're gonna it's like buying those hours so when you actually get the flu you're ready and to rock and roll your white blood cells are like oh we know who this homie like we're gonna shoot it up and we already know what's gonna kill it with that being said the author connects that to the word overcome because in the bible it says how we have overcome by the blood of the lamb and this is referring to jesus dying on the cross and then coming to life, resurrecting and defeating death, and how we're able to do that, and how we have victory in Jesus to overcome sin, overcome evil, overcome death. And to some, it's going to be a harder concept to grasp because it sounds very like fairy tale. But I think when you really recognize and you take a step back and you see sin and you see evil at what it is and how Satan is being just a chaotic, confusing, annoying enemy he is, then you start realizing like, oh, this is the victory I have over him. This is the victory I have over Satan and the victory I have through the blood of Jesus. And this connects to how we have immunization shots, how we get our vaccinations, because Jesus already overcame sin. Jesus already overcame death. And because he was able to do that, we get to live and get to thrive in his victory. It's, it's kind of hard to explain like the immunization and then the overcoming and connecting the two, but I hope you, you see it. Like it's like, <sighs> words are hard. We're able to overcome the flu because we had this shot put into us that somebody already overcame and it's just a weak one, so we're able to overcome it. Jesus overcame death and because we trust that he is king and we trust that he did resurrect and come back to life, we have that victory as well, if that makes sense. All right, moving on. That one was hard. I was already nervous to explain that one, but okay. Hope you got it, but moving on. The last thing he talks about is blood transfusion. He uses this to tie everything we talked about in part one and right now together. Blood transfusion is a huge deal and it's crazy that we are able to do that today and thank God we can because it's saved many, 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 many lives. To people who donate blood, like thank you for doing that because it really does help others and it really does serve a greater purpose. I say that because my uncle was recently in the hospital and he was on his deathbed and his platelet levels were down and we were all praying as a family and just hoping that his platelets could recover and his body could recover and they were just not so he had to get a ton of blood transfusions and he's doing better now but like thank you lord for blood transfusion and for people who donate their blood because i don't think my uncle would be alive today if he did not get that blood transfusion and it's super mind-blowing the way it all connects to jesus always everything you guys the fingerprints of god are literally everywhere. You just need to look and you need to, like some are more obvious, like the sunset, clear fingerprint of the Lord because they're beautiful, beautiful paintings every single day, sunrise and sunset, clearly. Then you look into like the smaller details and you're like, oh my gosh, God, that is a genius thing to think about. Anyways, just look for God's fingerprints. 
because they're everywhere. Anyways, back to blood transfusion because I went on a rant. So the, the final thoughts that he wanted to wrap everything together regarding blood transfusion is how through Christ's blood, we are able to take in what comes with it. So blood is life. God giving us eternal life through the blood of Jesus. The cleansing. Jesus cleanses us from our sins through his blood, through our overcoming. Jesus overcame sin and death, so we are able to be overcome sin and death and be victorious in that. And just this analogy that is so used in the Bible. Today I was in church and I forget we were, we were singing. We were singing something about how we were made alive in the blood of Jesus or something like that. And I it makes it so much sweeter to sing these songs after reading this book and realizing like that is 100% true, not only in the biblical sense, but the spiritual and even the biological sense, we are made alive in the blood of Jesus. Lastly, we cannot not talk about communion um, because communion is an act of remembering of Jesus going to the cross and how we take, drink his blood and we eat his flesh. Usually that's in the form of grape juice and a little cracker. It's a very, very, very sweet moment. I love communion. I have always loved communion. I think it's such a beautiful reminder that we do. And even especially after reading this book and realizing how the blood of Jesus is so powerful in different senses, then it's made it sweeter for me to take communion. It serves as a reminder that the power of the blood of Jesus, the victory of the blood of Jesus, the cleansing of the blood of Jesus is in us. We are alive in Jesus and Jesus is alive. Whenever we take communion, it's a reminder like Jesus is real, Jesus is true and Jesus is alive in me. Today we live in a world that's really far away from God and it's kind of sad and obviously it brings struggles and it brings doubts and it brings hurt. Just seeing what's going on in the world, it's honestly really painful to even, for me, like just thinking about it is kind of sad and just, I don't know, the world needs so much of God, it needs so much of Jesus. But we have the reminder of the blood of Christ that we have to trust and believe and have that victory and hope in Jesus. Last thing that he mentions that I want to just mention, he says, no other New Testament image such as the shepherd, the building, or the bride expresses that concept of Christ in me as beautiful and as accurate as the blood of Jesus because it's literally in us. And when we take communion, when we take the grape juice, it's not only going inside of us spiritually because it's a, an act of proclamation that we proclaim that Jesus is King. It's an act of proclamation that we surrender everything that we are to Him. But it's also feeding our actual physical bodies. Like that tiny little grape juice is probably giving us some nutrients that is feeding other organs and just making our body still work fine. So I think it's cool that it's a double thing. All right, that's all I have. This one was a lot harder to film, like I said. It's been sweet to read this book. It's been sweet to film these and share it with you guys. And it's been sweet to just be growing more in the Lord, growing more in love with Him and just, you know, just being here, loving the Lord. Thank you guys for watching. I'm Keep me in your prayers. I'm keeping you guys in my prayers, all my subscribers and all the people who watch my videos. I'm so grateful for you all. I guess I'm just grateful for you guys because you guys actually take the time to listen to me. It can be annoying, I think, but I don't know. I hope you feel encouraged and that's the only reason why I'm doing this. Like pushing you towards the Lord and pushing you towards Jesus because that's the best decision I ever made and I want that for you. That's why I'm doing this, to further the kingdom of God. So, I'm just rambling all day today. I don't know. All right, well, that's all. I don't like ending these either. I don't know how to end them, but happy Tuesday. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.